Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification icon down below so you can be notified when I release a new tips, tricks, or configuration tutorial video. And if you're a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, you'll notice that we are in a different location. The lighting is a little different. <clears throat> Before we get into tonight's video, my rack over here, this is just a temporary, uh, this is just a temporary setup until I can get everything done. So, uh, new, new digs and, uh, got a lot of cool stuff coming up for you guys. I can now do all of the outside wireless things that, uh, that I've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, we're going to do a Nest thermostat install video later this week. Um, I've got full sheets of drywall over here for real walls. You're going to get to watch me run. I'm going to do videos as I run cat, cat, uh, 5e or cat six throughout this entire place. So I hope you will stick around now tonight. What we're talking about is the grand stream GSC 3510. And this is a beta product from grand stream. But with Grandstream, Grandstream does allow me to talk about beta products as long as I give you the full disclosure that, that they are uh, beta. You might be asking yourself, what is the GSC 3510? And it is Grandstream's entry into the IP audio world. This is their, uh, their speaker right here. <clears throat> so the speaker comes in the box. We've got that. Get your uh, GNU propaganda as always. Let's see. Mounting plate. Another mounting plate. And then we get some wall anchors and screws and a hex. Um, a hex key there. So <clears throat> we're going to set this up. We're going to plug it in tonight. We're going to take a look at it, see what's going on with it. I, you know, I took it out of the box on the live stream. Other than being out of the box on the live stream last weekend, I have not uh, played with this. So real quick, what we're going to do is we, we're going to go over the data sheet and uh, take a look at it. All right, so this is Grand Streams first SIP intercom speaker microphone and they are marketing this product towards offices, schools, hospitals, and apartments to replace your traditional intercom solution. So it's more of an intercom it sounds like than a speaker where we're going to play music and things like that or do alerting like we're going to do with the grand stream. So it says that it's a two-way device, and it has an eight-watt high-fidelity HD speaker. We'll put that to the test. And three directional microphones. And the microphones are multi-channel microphone array design, so MMAD. They offer a 4.2 meter dis uh, distance pickup, so you're 10 to 12 feet or further in there. And it supports Bluetooth, uh, built-in whitelist, blacklist to block unwanted calls, integrated dual-band Wi-Fi, and advanced acoustic echo cancellation. If we pair the GSC 3510 with any other Grandstream devices, including desktop and cordless phones, um, it can we can sculpt a state-of-the-art security and voice intercom solution. This can also be tied into the facility access products, which we will have uh, videos on. So let's see. So it is full band and wide band audio co codec supported, including Opus and G722. It does have dual band 802.11 ABGN Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It is PoE. It's got one. 10 100 megabit port um, with PoE plus. It's got a two pin multi-purpose import 
excuse me, it's got a two pin multi-purpose input to support peripherals, including call buttons. So what I thought was power is apparently an, a relay input or something like that. Does standard SIP, of course, TCP IP, um, and they throw all these marketing things in there, but it looks, it appears to have open VPN. We're gonna find out when we get into the interface. And let's see, anything else we need to know? So codex G711, G722, G726-32, Opus, G729A and B. Um, it says the telephony features are SIP paging, Grandstream proprietary push to talk, call waiting with priority override. Like I said, it is a, it is an eight watt high fidelity HD speaker. It does support layer two QoS and layer three QoS. Comes in a multitude of languages. And let's see. Yeah, I think enough talking about this. Let's plug it in and see what's gonna happen. All right, so uh, I went and grabbed an ethernet cable. We have the speaker here. We're gonna plug into the ethernet port right here. It does have this nice rubber grippy on the bottom. I kind of like that, so when we set it over here, it's not really going to go anywhere. And I'm just going to plug it into my 8-port Unify switch. Let me try a different port. Nothing happened. All right. I must have that port disabled. All right, so we're booting. We've got a red dot as we boot. So we'll see exactly what happens. We'll join it to our uh, UCM and we'll see if we can page through it. We'll see what other functionality this has. Okay, no more red light. Must be booted, but I've got no other visual indicators besides I do have you can see the network. The network is lit up, but I've got no other indicator on the device that it's booted and ready to go. So I'm gonna set it over here on top of the rack. Oh, and I just heard, I don't know if you can hear this or not. Let's see, see if you can hear this. I don't know if you heard that or not, uh, but I'm, I'm getting some, it sounds like white noise coming, coming through here. So we'll set it down here. So we're gonna get the, we're gonna get the IP and we're gonna get into the interface and we're gonna see what this thing is, uh, what it's all about. Here we go, so we're gonna zoom in a little on this. Now, like I said, this is the first time I, this is the first time I've plugged this in. You can see it's a non-secure uh, connection there. So we're gonna try admin, admin. And it said it's currently using the default password, please change. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so it looks like we need accounts on here. What else? Network status, system info gives us our part number, how long we've been online. Here's our accounts, all of our SIP settings, our codex. Interesting. Calls. Yeah, so I could, I guess I could see where you would hang this guy on the wall, kind of like an intercom. I mean, if that's what it's really meant for is intercom, I think the format is good. Um, here's our phone settings here. Here's our network settings. Pretty standard stuff. 
Bluetooth is disabled by default. Wi-Fi is disabled by default. Open VPN, perfect. And some advanced network stuff. All right, security settings. We can disable SSH, so it's on by default. And then our access method is HTTP by default, so we go HTTP or HTTPS there. More user management stuff. Preferences, LED management. So <clears throat> looks like there's three different lights on this. And they're all off. Let me see what happens. Okay, so when I toggle um, the red, let's see here. So when I toggle the red, the red one comes on. Okay, I toggled the green. But there we go. There's the green. And then there's blue. So red would be your default. So you can, yeah, you can change the LED color. I'll just turn it, uh, turn it back off there. And uh, it has a missed call indicator, so it's obviously one of these LEDs. TR TR069 setup sensor settings. So this must be uh, where we can plug into the unit that we were looking at there earlier. There's a backup under maintenance. We've got an upgrade, config file, provisioning, advanced, system diagnostics, event notification. So that's interesting. Applications, we got LDAP, phone book, we've got recording, we've got device detection. So this, Look at this, shows us where the mics are. Mic one, mic two, mic three. So let's do some testing. Uh, the call and audio functions will be affected during testing and after, okay, we'll click okay. So let's do a mic one test. Mic one. So let's do mic one. After selecting input audio to the microphone, okay. That was no, okay. Right, let's do number one again. Just okay. a test. So let's do. So it's recording several seconds before that. So, all right, let's go to mic two. Mic two. So let's do. Mic three. Mic three. So let's do. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about about that, but uh, we'll stop the testing there. Let's test the speaker. Pump's probably going to kick on back here in a second, but here we go. And that was <laughs> that was not exciting at all. I don't know what I expected. I don't know. All right, here. Now we've got the LED, the LED. So let's display green. Ah, so it only displays for the amount of time that you hold, that you hold it. Interesting, okay. Certificate verify, validation success, reset button. I'm not gonna test the reset button. All right, so the moment that we've all been waiting for, now we need to set up an account. So, let's log in to our UCM and do that, and we'll come back and set it up here. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go over to our extensions here. We're going to add a we're going to add an extension because that's what we do. We keep all the extensions from testing. Actually, let's go back to our extensions. We're going to do 5007. 
And what we're going to do then is come back over here. We're going to go to 5007. And I'm just making this really easy. I'm just, everything is, and save that and apply. All right, uh, SIP settings, I don't think we're gonna do, we're just gonna leave this stuff default and see what happens. So let's go back to our status. It looks like we're registered. So the theory is if I pick up my phone and I call 5007, then, hmm, okay. Interesting. It says we're registered and that we're available, but I couldn't make a call to it. Test. All right, so I'm missing something. I am missing something. What is that something? 5007, we don't need uh, SIP settings here. SIP registration. Let's see here. SIP, that's all good, that's all good. Other than there, I mean, the only thing I could think of maybe Kodak. Let's see. Let's go check out our codecs for this extension. Let's see. PCMU. It's on the list. PCMA. That's on the list. So we want G722. There's Opus. Go ahead and save that and apply. And we'll see what happens here. Maybe this thing's going to mess with us. Maybe we don't need it messing with us. Call settings. Oh, well, look at the ringtones this thing has got. This thing's got a ton of ringtones. Advanced settings. I don't really think we need any of this stuff. Music on hold. 5,007, right? So let's try and call in 5,000. So it can call me. But I can't call it. The number you have dialed is busy. Please. The number I have dialed is busy. Weird. Right? Registered. When in doubt, reboot. And Grandstream loves that two minute message. Okay, let's try calling it again. The number you have dialed is busy. Please try again later. Hmm. I don't know right now at the top of my head what I'm doing wrong. If you know what I'm doing wrong, 
put it down in the comments. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to originate a call. Or I'm going to uh, start a call here out to my phone. Test. 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 Okay. Okay. So you can hear the echo. Today, I consider myself. And hello. Hello. <laughs> Must have okay, some, some sort, sort of, of echo, echo cancellation. cancellation. All right, so I can't call it, but it can call out. And you heard that is what I've got going on. There's an absolute wreck at the moment. I'm way too close to be doing that. Um, so I think this is going to be a good product. I think it is definitely a different use case than um, any other IP speaker that, that we're seeing. Or I, I guess not any other IP speaker that we're seeing, but the IP speakers that I work with. This has a much different use case. This is purpose-built. It's not meant to do, apparently, background music. It's not uh, a meant meant to do alerting it is literally meant to be an intercom so if you remember growing up in school those old wooden boxes you know that were up on the uh, up on the wall and every morning they you know do the do announcements that's that's what this is targeted to replace i think they can do it the unit's nice and small the mounting options are fantastic you can put a call button on it you know hitting the you know going into this uh, input we're going to keep playing with it. I have to give feedback back to Grandstream. So if you think you know what I was doing wrong, why this thing can't accept a phone call, um, especially since the extension says that it is, um, says that it's, it's ready to rock and roll. Um, it's available. I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's an interesting product. Like I said, it is beta. Know that it is beta. I do not know what the street price uh, price is going to be on this so that's something else we're going to have to keep our keep our uh, eyes and ears open for but i'm going to continue to test it um and then at some point once i get things rearranged this guy will get mounted on the wall next to a, another speaker so but uh that's it for this video if you like the video please give me a thumbs up Con constructive criticism always welcome down in the comments please follow me on twitter and instagram if you need it consulting go to willyhow.com fill out that contact form if we can't help you we'll get you to someone who can that is our promise to you if you'd like to talk to us on discord the link is down below um, if you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon, and thank you to those folks, that link is down below. And the Amazon affiliate links are also down below. It doesn't change your price, but it does kick a couple bucks to the channel to keep gear rolling in. And once again, I want to thank each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next video.